Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company, with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. We are here today at Fremont Elementary School, home of the Falcons, and today we're all here to... Do the today at Fremont Elementary, home of the Falcons. Got a great group of fifth graders here, and the topic of the day is division. Division, division, division. Um, we've explored a lot of the methods that are used, and for many people, they think of division, and they think of the bracket, the long division. That doesn't sound very appealing. Long division sounds like it's going to take a long time, so we try to put it off as much as possible. This is a group of fifth graders that has demonstrated understanding and familiarity with three different division models. Now, a lot of us think that that means that we have to lay out some boxes, do a reverse area model, utilize some other strategies. But what this group has identified are different algorithms. Now, that doesn't sound too appealing at hand, but I want you to see how this group works through all of these models and methods. So, today what we're going to do is look at division at the fifth grade level, generally dividing four-digit numbers by one or two-digit numbers. And when we do that, you're going to see that there are many different approaches you could take. So, we've got our groups of two right here. Everybody here is paired up so that they can discuss and make sense of problems all together. So, we're going to start off with something very straightforward. I want to go ahead and lay out one of their division problems that they have laid out for homework and see how we approach this because there are going to be a lot of different models that we're going to explore. So your first challenge here is 4,743 divided by 3. I want to give this group about two minutes to start working through this and as they do, I want to introduce you to some of their models that they've worked with. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Yes! Go ahead and kick things off. We had an earlier problem as a warm-up, and their work through these earlier problems led us to three very unique approaches, some of which have a lot of similarities. Um, one of which we looked at first dealt exclusively with place value and worth very similar to what we would call a partial quotient algorithm. So instead of thinking about this as 9,057, so they had to do 9,057 divided by 3. They looked at this as 9,000s and 510s and 7,1s and looked at how many 3s could fit into each of those and added those pieces together. So we look at this exclusively as 9,000. That's what that 9 represents. They asked how many 3s could we get into 9,000? 3,000. So we were able to take 9,000 of that out, we're left with 57. And you can start to conjecture how many more groups of three work in just 57. It's a lot simpler to break it down to those more friendly chunks. Then we looked at the long division algorithm, which I think most of us are familiar with. You go by place value and go over. Three into nine, as far as thousandths, and then three. And then look at the hundreds, there's zero. And then there's a lot of work. And now something interesting that I think is a ages old frustration with the long division algorithm is the fact that it's long not just in time but in length. It is not uncommon to run out of paper or smart board space um, before you have to kind of start writing really really tiny. One of our students here by the name of Victoria introduced us to a method that involved space saving but allowed for some similarities with the standard algorithm. So this is what we call now the Victorian division algorithm. Yes, we're still going to do 3 into 9 three times, and then subtract that. But instead of continuing downward, we take this value here and bring it into the tens place of whatever that next digit is. So here, it's double zero, and we're still dividing, and we still do this. But now, we're carrying it over here. 
we are doing the same division, but in a much more streamlined manner. So credit goes to Victoria and her Victorian division algorithm. So let's go around and look at some of our solutions here on how we approach this, including the aforementioned Victoria. So we're looking at a couple of ways that we got to 1,581. So we look at our long division method, very well organized, by the way. By the way, if you're panicking about the uh, writing on the desk, these are specifically designed dry erase desks. So there's plenty of space to work with, and it'll all be clean. No problem, Mr. Rodriguez. Your classroom is OK. Um, so we look at how this structures out, and it's very familiar and very common. Very well organized. The arrows go and follow the place values. Excellent. And in fact, what I appreciate you did here is you use kind of a reference point. So can you tell us what this is over here? It's my multiplication. So it's one, two, three, go three so times nine. So for each of these factors, you show what multiple of three that is over here so that you can use it in your work here. So it's a great method of efficiency to get to 1,581. And I also greatly appreciate that you check that to make sure that 1,581 times three does in fact get us back to 4,743. So the two of you don't have to ask, is this right? You know, because it works. So here's Victoria, and I wonder how well this is gonna come through on camera, but she used the Victorian division algorithm in figuring this out. So you can see, with one, we bring over to one, and now we're doing 17 minus 15. So the one actually ends up up here. So we know that three goes into 17 five times. And then two goes into uh, the four that was next to it. So this becomes 24. So do you find that doing it this way helps save you a lot of space when you're working things out? Mm -hmm. So why do you prefer using this compared to the standard algorithm? Because that just looks way too confusing. So what the value here is, is that you're using the same structures and understanding of place value and pretty much doing the same thing with all of the values, but utilizing a more compact and efficient model of long division here. So if anybody ever tells you that that's not how the, the, the way you do this, you tell them to go check through the map because you've got the evidence. Wonderful job. Back here at Fremont Elementary with our wonderful group of fifth graders today exploring division. Now, um, we got a chance to explore another model that maybe you haven't seen before in our earlier segments. We call it the Victorian method. Uh, and I was curious. I had to jump in. I really hadn't seen it before, so I had to, you know, of course, question the wisdom of the ancients and of the wise and make sure that it worked for me. So we gave our class another division expression to have them solve it. And I worked through it myself using the Victorian method. Thanks, Victoria. So um, we got 948. We worked it through. Couldn't do anything with this for the thousandth place. But we were able to combine 4,700 into 4,700s and then work through it from here. And very much like the rest of the class, we ended up with 948, but that's not all. For most of what we've seen, I saw this at the end, R3. Now, R3 sounds like the most boring Star Wars robot in the universe. What does R3 mean? Let me get some hands here. Okay, what does R3 stand for? And I want to hear some different ways that you make sense of this. Here and then here. Go ahead. It means remainder. It, it means remainder. It means remainder. Um, it's the same thing I was going to talk about. It means remainder, but it also means it's like an extra like number that is like three. So like you put it on the side, it's like a different part of the family. So when you say remainder, what you say, it's a different part of, you say the family? Yeah. Oh, it's a family, you guys. I love this number family. You guys are like my number family. Um, so when we say it's extra, and then it's remainder, we mean that it's left over. But how much is an R? I think we use that letter R to represent remainder without really making sense of what that three really is all about. So why do we have a three there? You said it was extra, you said it was a remainder. What are your thoughts here? Yes. Mm, the reason that we have three is because we don't have an extra number that would fill in for the three. So what you're saying, I think I get what you're saying, is that we're trying to get groups of five. Because what division is, is taking a larger number and creating 
equal sized smaller groups. If I have 4,743 things, I want to know how many groups of five things I could make out of that original amount. It could be jelly beans, it could be potato chips, it could be any type of food that apparently is very popular in math problems. You ever notice that most word problems involve some sort of candy or cookies or something you got to eat? I've never eaten that much in math. Always very curious. But whatever groups we're making, when we get all of our groups, we got three things that don't fit into a group of five. Now, how big are we trying to make our groups? If we're dividing in this expression, how big are we making these smaller groups? If I'm dividing by five, I'm taking my larger number and I'm creating smaller groups of what? Five. Five, right? Well, with this last group of three, I don't have a full group. I want to do something. I want to change our mindset a little bit. I know we've been working a lot with division. But I want to shift into the world of fractions a little bit. And I want to think about this last set. When we think about fractions, we think about part compared to the whole. If I had a whole group, how many things would be in that group? Five. Five, right? Five. So that would be my denominator if this was a fraction. But I don't have five things for a whole group. How many things do I have? What's left over? Three. So part of our last group is the three that are left over. Might I suggest to you, if we want to move beyond the world of remainders and express our answers in a more mathematical sense, you have dry erase desks. I'm going to dare you to do something. I dare you to erase the remainder. What? No. I'm what? so sorry, you guys. Believe in me. We're going to do this. And replace it with our fraction. Because we have three-fifths of our last group remaining. 4,743 divided by 5 isn't simply remainder. We don't want to treat that last three like it's left over, like it's a remainder. We want to treat it like it belongs, that it has value, that it's a part of a group that's just not yet complete. Three-fifths is what that remainder three is worth. That is three-fifths of that last group that we just can't complete yet. When we talk about remainders, it's not just something off to the side. It has value. And often overlooked is the sense that this can be represented with a true value, a fraction, a part of a whole group that is not yet complete. When we come back, we're going to play around with division and remainders and see if we can look at them in terms of decimals. Wrapping things up here at Fremont Elementary, this fifth grade team has really opened up a lot of eyes as far as how we look at division of larger numbers to smaller numbers. We've looked at different algorithms and models for dividing. We've looked at ways to reconsider that remainder as a fraction to be more precise about what that value is. This is a group that has demonstrated that they are ready for anything which is great because I'm anything. And I've got one last problem to work with them today. We've been living a lot in the 4,000s with our um, main uh, divisor here. We're going to change it up. We're going to work down into the 2,000s. But I have a mystery number that we're going to be dividing by. And they said that they were ready for anything. And so let's see what that looks like. Let's get your markers ready to go. Some of them have already started with the structure to see whatever that mystery number is. And I think when we reveal it, we're going to have a variety of reactions. Here it comes. What? what? That's right. Ten. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, let's see what you got. Here we go. Oh my so there were audible gasps, as I'm sure you were um, able to pick up. The reason being is that for many of them, this will be the first time that they're trying to apply this concept with a two-digit divisor. So, 
we'll see how that looks regarding a lot of the models that look in place. And we also made sure that we're dividing with a number that's going to have a remainder. We talked a lot about how we can represent that with a fraction. Now let's see if there's something we can do with that fraction. Let's go around and see how our teams are approaching this. I notice that we are working with multiples of 10 here. Could you talk a little bit about your plan? So I'm going to try to find um, that 10 multiplied 2 equals. So okay, so you want to make sure you have your multiples ready to reference in case you need to apply them here when you divide, yeah. okay? Let's check in over here. We see kind of a modified version of the Victorian method. And you have a solution here of 293 with a remainder of 1 that then you were able to convert into a fraction of 1 tenth. Now yes. we're going to hold on to that because I see that you were able to apply that same Victorian method even though this was a two-digit number. So hold on to that because I think that's going to be really valuable to bring forward. Wonderful okay. job here. There's a lot of different approaches that we're seeing. Okay, so over here we see the long division method and we're subtracting. We have nine left and then we're bringing that nine down. So same structure here. Okay, good progress. Keep going here. So a couple of different approaches and it's very impressive to see everybody get to a certain point where they're all at that same quotient here. A very confident group here. So we're going to play around with where to go from there because if you noticed, they have all but abandoned the remainder. We're living in fraction mode right now. So what can we do with that fraction to be even more precise in representing that value a little bit differently? So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and come back together in 4, 3, 2, 1. There is a variety of solutions here. Actually, I shouldn't say that. The solution is the same everywhere. But the methods that you took were very different. However you got there, whatever path you took, it looks like everybody did something like this and got 293, remainder 1, and then I noticed then many of you said farewell to the remainder. And you rewrote that remainder as one, because you had a remainder of one, tenth, because we're dividing by ten. So we had we had 293 and one tenth. Now, many of you are aware that once you have fractions in the form of tens, you can turn them into a decimal, right? So if I was going to represent one tenth as a decimal, what would that equal? A decimal. So what decimal would I write for one tenth? Or how would I write that? Uh, one and two hundred. So a zero point one, right? Yes. So what we're really saying is, that 293 and 1 tenth is the same thing as 293.1. And what's beautiful about this is once you have a remainder that you can convert into hundredths, let's say if you're dividing by hundredths, or a thousand, or ten thousand, or any other multiple of ten, or power of ten rather, you could then represent that fraction as a decimal. So we would have represented this in the past as remainder one, but now you have done something remarkable today. You've represented solutions to division expressions as whole numbers, as remainders, as fractions, and as decimals, all in the course of one afternoon. Hey, ladies and gentlemen of Fremont Elementary Scholars, thank you so much for your work today and your visibility on the program. You got a lot to be proud of here at Fremont.